Our next topic in our financial math chapter is going to be savings plans and investments. We looked at investments when we dealt with compound interest earlier in the term, but there we were looking at having a lump sum that we put into an account and left there without changing it for a certain period of time. In this section, we're going to be looking at savings plans where we deposit a regular amount each month. And so the amount we, are, we have in the account is going to change not just from the interest, but from us putting money in the account over time. And we're going to be able to work out using spreadsheets again, how much money we have over a certain period of time. An example of a savings plan like this might be saving for retirement. In particular, an IRA, which is um, an individual retirement account, is a special type of a retirement account in which the money you invest is exempt from income tax until you withdraw it. Let's say we deposit $100 each month into an IRA earning 6% annually or 6% APR for 20 years. So let's investigate this first with just looking at a few months to see how the process works. And then we'll look at calculating out the whole 20 years with spreadsheet information. All right, so we're going to make an assumption here right off the bat. And that is that we're gonna deposit our money at the end of a month. So our previous balance, if we haven't yet deposited any money, would be zero. The interest earned on zero is actually going to be zero. Okay, And then we'll make our monthly deposit at the end. And this might make sense with you know, getting a monthly paycheck. You get the paycheck at the end of the month, and that's when you might have money to put into your retirement account. So we've made that monthly deposit at the end of the month, so it hasn't earned any interest. So our new balance on the account would right at the end of the first month would be $100. Things get more interesting in the second month because now we have a balance of $100 and we can earn interest on that balance. Now our interest rate is 6% annually, but we want to earn interest for just a single month. So we need to convert it to a monthly rate by dividing by 12%, by 12 for there being 12 months in a year. So our monthly rate is going to be 0 0.06 divided by 12. So we're gonna take this monthly rate and multiply it by our previous balance. 100 times 0 0.06 divided by 12 will give me 50 cents in interest. So in that first month, I'm going to earn 50 cents in interest on that $100 I had in the account. Then I'm also going to make another deposit because remember at the end of each month, we're gonna make that $100 deposit. So my new balance is going to be 250 cents, 200 dollars and 50 cents because I've actually added my previous balance, the interest I earned on it and the monthly deposit to get my new balance. And we're gonna keep doing this month after month. We now have in at the end of month three, we have a balance of $200.50. We can work out how much interest we earn on that by multiplying by that monthly rate of 0 0.06 divided by 12. It's gonna turn out that I get $1 of interest from that. Technically it rounds to a dollar. It wasn't exactly a dollar, but we usually round to the nearest cent. And then our monthly deposit would be $100. Again, we take that, we put that monthly deposit in at the end of the month when we get our paycheck. So adding the previous balance, the interest you earned on it, and the monthly deposit, we now have $301.50 in the account. We'll do one more month. We take the previous balance, and at the end of month four, we earn interest on that previous balance. So you take 301.50, multiply by our monthly rate, 0 0.06 divided by 12, and it turns out we're going to earn $1.51 when we round. So notice our interest earned is increasing each month because we have more and more money in the account. And we're gonna put even more in because we're gonna deposit a new $100 in. So adding up our previous balance, the interest earned and the new monthly deposit, by the end of month four, we've got $403.01. So we've deposited $400 and that extra is from the interest. We have 301 in interest. That doesn't seem like a whole lot, but remember we've only gone four months out. What we wanna do 
is look at this for 20 years and what the impact would be of continuing to make this regular deposit for 20 full years. To do that, instead of going all the way out with this table, we're going to use the spreadsheet formula. And we're going to specifically use the future value formula because we want to know what our future value in the account is after 20 years. Um, now, this future value formula is the same formula in almost all spreadsheets. So you could use Google Sheets or Excel. Uh, what we're going to start all formulas with is an equal sign. You have to start the the formula with equals, and then we'll have FV for future value. I did discuss this when we did compound interest. It's actually the same formula, but we're going to have some interesting things happening here because we now have monthly deposits. So my first entry is going to be the rate. Now that's not the annual rate. It is going to be whatever rate you use at each time you make a deposit. So in this case, it's got to be converted to a monthly rate. So if I were entering this in, for this example, I would say equals FV, and then for the rate, I would put 0 0.06 divided by 12, because I want the monthly rate to go in for the rate here, because the rate the spreadsheet wants is when you the rate used for every deposit you're making, or in other words, every time you earn interest. Now, the number of periods, the second entry, that's another way of saying how many deposits you make. Well, you're making deposits monthly, 12 times every year, for 20 years. So let's put 20 in, um, multiplied by 12. And spreadsheets and asterisks means multiplication. Then we've got our payment. That's our deposit. This is going to be our regular deposit. And so that's the $100. And then our present value represents our starting amount. And remember, we started with zero here. So we would just put zero in. And at this point, we can actually close the parentheses. I have, when you open up the spreadsheet and start this, they will sometimes go ahead and prompt you with what you need. And one of the things that the spreadsheet may show um, is something, a prompt that says end or beginning. That's actually something we don't need to enter in because we're going to always in this class be using the assumption that we are going to enter the information or the deposit at the end of the month. And the end is always assumed by spreadsheets. So we can actually leave that off because it is an assumption that spreadsheets make if you don't put anything in that last category. So we're going to leave that off. I only kind of wrote it in uh, to show you that that's what you would do. You could ignore it because we're depositing at the end of the month. So this is the thing you are required to enter into your spreadsheet. I've gone ahead and done that in Google Sheets. And when I do that, here's the thing I entered in exactly. Here's a screenshot. I've got that formula entered in with the equals at the beginning. And I also put in the, the spreadsheet will actually show you what you're entering in when. And then it returned uh, negative $46,204.09. It says negative there. Um, spreadsheets don't want to say that you've got the money yet. They actually say that it's a future value, so they put it as a negative. Ignore the negative for our purposes. Basically, after 20 years, you're going to have $46,204.09 saved in your IRA. Okay, now that amount of money is the total you have in the IRA. It encompasses the interest you've earned as well as the monthly deposit. We've seen that in the table. Well, let's work out exactly how much you've deposited and therefore how much interest that is. So let's work out how much interest you've earned over those 20 years. To do that, we're going to have to start with looking at the total amount deposited. To work that out, Let's go ahead and think about how much we deposit each month, which is $100. And we're doing that each month, so we need to multiply that by 12 to get how much we would have for a single year. And then we would multiply that by 20 for going out 20 years. So multiplying this together, it turns out we've deposited $24,000 into the account. So when we compare this, with um, how much we have in the account, we can actually see that there's a lot more in the 
money in the account than we've actually deposited. In particular, the difference between those two would be how much we've earned in interest. So the interest that we've earned can be found just simply from subtracting those two, 46,204.09 minus what we deposited of 24,000. So we've earned $22,204.09. That's pretty good. That's a good amount of money. In fact, it's almost almost the same amount we deposited. We've earned quite a bit of interest. That's a good chunk of change. This is why people will encourage you to start saving early and make regular deposits into retirement funds because as time goes on, your interest that you earn by, even if it's just a little amount you deposit each month is going to grow and the deposits keep going and the interest keeps building. And eventually your interest may even outpace your deposits. So this can be very helpful. Starting early to, to save for retirement can be really helpful. And even if you just do a little bit at a time.